Hello, my friends. Only those of you who are watching this later probably will see this part. And I just want to tell you how grateful I am that you're taking the time to watch this when it's not live. So I'm going to hang out for a few minutes before we get started with our subject matter and wait for a few people to show up so that I can say hello. And then I will talk about my loose skin because everybody's dying to know, right? Especially after my last video. So Oh, here are a few of you are popping in. Don't forget to say hello when you join in so that I can say hello back to you. And hopefully we'll get a few more people in here and we can get started on our subject. So let's see who's here. Brandy Cronin's here. Hi. Is that Brandy Cronin? Or is it just Brandy C? Hi. <laughs> I hope it's the right person. Hey, Patty. How good to see you. Oh, Kaufman. So you're not even the same person I thought you were. I know so many lovely Brandies. Good to, good to meet you, Brandy Kaufman. <laughs> Marilyn Frank, welcome. Emily's live. Hey, what's up? How are things going for you guys this morning? Everything, well, I guess it's probably afternoon for most people, right? Hi, Patty Montero. Thank you for the compliment. Hey, Wendy. Good to see you. All right. I wait for a couple more people to get here because I just don't want to get started too soon. Hey, Destiny. Destiny Brown Perez. Good to see you. Rosie Osales. Hi from Texas. Awesome. Hey, PhD Natural Me. Good to see you. Oh my goodness, you guys. I miss all of you. I miss being able to watch everybody's videos. I kind of hate that I'm so busy now that I don't watch anyone's videos anymore. Makes me sad. I just, I'm really busy, if you haven't noticed. What's the temp? Freezing? I actually don't know. I should have checked before I got on here. Um, this morning, it was so cold that when I walked outside, the wind was burning my face. So if that tells you anything, you could see your breath. So it has to be below 32. It's nasty out there today. Nasty. Oh, Kimberly Herring from Atlanta. Keto Kim. Good to see you. All right. So some of the comments that I've been getting on my latest Vlogmas, because, you know, I put it all out there a little bit. I didn't show my belly, but I did show my arms pretty good. I thought it was about time that you guys could got to see what it really looks like when you have had a significant weight loss. Now, granted, I know that my skin issues aren't as severe as some people's skin issues are after losing so much weight, but you can see I definitely have plenty of loose skin. And so I was asked to talk about it, talk about how I feel about it, how my mental state is with regards to my loose skin, how my view of loose skin has kind of changed over time. Um, we can talk about ways to um, improve your skin, things like that. So that's what this video is going to be about, at least at the beginning. And then we can chat about whatever. Oh, PJ, don't tell me that it's that we're colder in Utah today than than in Canada. <laughs> That's depressing. You guys, we haven't had snow like this in a few years, actually. I was thinking, oh, my gosh, we should go sledding. That's what my first thought was. We should go sledding. And then I went, we have no snow clothes. It hasn't snowed significantly here in Utah for the last few years. So none of my kids have, like, um, snow pants or heavy boots or gloves or, like, we are, we were, we are grossly... Uh, underprepared for a sledding trip. So you'll have to know if we do go sledding and you see a video about that, you'll have to know I spent like hundreds of dollars of our Christmas funds on winter clothes. So I'm going to have to decide if I feel like that's a good idea or not. I'm, I'm toying with the idea just because there's still so much snow. It's crazy out there. It is cold and you know how much I hate the cold. If you've been watching my channel, just saying the word makes me... Ugh. I don't enjoy it. When I was a kid, I loved it. I would spend hours playing in the snow. And in fact, I remember, gosh, I think it was 1984. I was about 10 years old when there was this huge snowstorm and we got like feet of snow. And my brothers and I like made like, like a corn maze, you know, or a hay maze in the snow and like could crawl. And when you could crawl through the trenches and no one could see you. That's how I remember that, but it hasn't been like that in a really long time here. It's been pretty dry, actually, the last few years. 
So I guess it's kind of nice to see some real snow that's sticking. Not just the slushy, gross brown snow that just makes you feel depressed all the time. Of course, give it, give it time. By January, I'm sure I'll be plenty depressed about the snow. Oh my goodness. Okay, who else is here? Paulette, Paulette Hilk. Rosalba Zuniga Escalante, good to see you. Barbara B, hey, Barbara B, Hito. Um, Tony, oh, Tori, Tori Denley. Thrifting some winter clothes. Yes, that's of course my plan. You know I'm all about the thrift. I'm all about the thrift. So I would definitely go to the thrift stores first before heading even to Walmart. But I'm just worried that maybe everyone else has already had that idea and had money before me. So I get paid tomorrow, so... Fingers crossed I can find some decent stuff because I'd love to take my kids sledding. I'd love to go sledding. I don't think I've ever gone sledding since I was a kid. That's another thing that I could do because of my weight loss that would be super fun, I think. I don't know, but then I'd have to buy me snow clothes. I don't know if I want to spend money on that. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right, so loose skin. We really need to talk about loose skin, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, so first of all, Everybody going into, you know, a major weight loss, especially if you are extremely obese, loose skin is definitely going to be an issue and something that you're going to think about from day one. When I first started, I was so desperate just to be able to walk that loose skin was literally the last thing on my mind. I knew that would probably happen, but I didn't like super worry about it. I remember being worried that I would have a lot here. So if you've, if you've noticed that um, my husband does have quite a bit here, from losing weight and I was worried that I would have that too um, as I started to lose and I realized I wasn't going to get as much of that as I thought I would I was very grateful because that's literally the only part of your body that you cannot cover up I mean I guess you can put a scarf in the winter but for the most part your neck is the only part that you cannot cover up so I was really worried mostly about my face because you know, I expected to get quite a few wrinkles, which I have, but not as badly as I thought. I mean, these ones are pretty significant, my my ones, because I do this all the time. But I just figure that's just par for the course. I'm 44 years old. You know, I'm not young. So <laughs> wrinkles are just part of the thing. I haven't had to deal with them because I was always bigger and it would always fill up my skin. And so I didn't really have wrinkles to speak of um, before I started this. Um, my main concern as I began losing weight was, of course, my arms. As you saw, if you watched yesterday's Vlogmas, and I highly recommend you do if you haven't seen it so that you can see what I'm talking about. As I began, began losing weight, I realized right away that my arms were going to be significant when it came to um, loose skin. I, I feel like my arms are probably the worst part of the loose skin for me. Um, as of now, as of now, I still have a little ways to go. And so I'm not 100% sure where my belly will end up. I do have quite a bit of rolls still on the front of me. Like, and they are filled still with some fat. I can feel the fat in there. And so I know I haven't, I can't really judge the loose skin on my stomach quite yet. Cause I just feel like I still have quite a bit to go in that area before I can judge whether or not the skin is going to be significant or not. As of now though, it's really not as bad as I was expecting. I fully expected that I would have a skin apron that, you know, extended down my thighs. Um, I do not. Thank goodness. I do not. Um, I, it definitely hangs down, but it, it isn't like so significant that I couldn't run or participate in active sports or things if I chose to. Now, you know, I'm not going to choose to do that, mm -mm. but if I chose to, it probably wouldn't interfere. I don't imagine that I would ever get my insurance to pay for loose skin removal because I really don't have any issues surrounding it. I know some people do. I know um, watching videos of people who have had skin removal that people have suffered from awful rashes and infections and things like that. And also the pain of just being a thinner, smaller framed person and having that skin still dragging you down on the front of you um, apparently can cause quite a bit of pain. So far, I have not dealt with that. But even as an extremely obese person, I never really dealt with a lot of that kind of thing. I didn't have a lot of rashiness. I didn't have a lot of pain. I don't have a lot of back pain regardless of having a very large chest my entire life. 
I have been blessed, especially because my left leg is almost a full two inches shorter than my right leg, which is a weird thing about me. So you'll laugh when you notice I'm filming, you know, I'm holding my camera and I'm walking. You'll, it'll go bing, bing, bing. <laughs> Makes me laugh every time because my left leg is dramatically shorter. So if you see me walking, I look like I'm limping most of the time because I am. I am limping because my leg is shorter. And that should cause me some back issues. I have some scoliosis. That should cause me back issues. And thankfully, I have been blissfully blessed in the pain department. I have, maybe I just have a higher pain tolerance because it doesn't seem like, even when I got my braces, I didn't have pain. I think my pain receptors must be lower than other people's. I don't know. But thankfully, because I'm a wimp and I don't really enjoy pain and I've never had a surgery of any kind. So that makes me a little nervous. Okay. That's not true. My mom reminded me that when I was one, you see my finger, how it's bent and I have a scar right in here. When I was one year old, my cousin slammed my finger repeatedly in a sliding closet door, nearly taking it off, taking my finger off. And apparently I did have to be put to sleep and have my finger surgically repaired when I was one. See my little <laughs> crookedy finger? Isn't that cute? I like it. I think it gives me distinction. But I don't remember that. So other than that, I have not had a surgery of any kind. So when it comes to, weight, to skin removal surgery, I am a little trepidatious, mostly just a chicken, big fat chicken. Well, not fat so much anymore, but chicken nonetheless. So yes, my arms are significant. I didn't wear a short sleeve shirt. I thought I should, but I like this shirt today and I, I like I look good in it. So I don't, I don't know. That's what I put on. But you can see even if I just grab hold of it. So this is my arm right here, my muscle. And then this all here is skin. Like there's three, four inches of it when it hangs down. It's mostly bothers me when I'm doing ballet because I want to wear a short sleeve shirt or a leotard of some kind when I'm doing ballet class and it waves and I hate that. Um, it doesn't bother me so much in clogging because I can wear long sleeve shirts. And during the day, I mostly wear long sleeve or three quarter sleeve shirts. I just figure if it bothers me, I will cover it up. Now, there are some days when it doesn't bother me and I just wear it and I flaunt it and I am cool with that. It takes kind of a mindset change to get to that point. It is not an easy thing to embrace. But I'll tell you what, if I have to choose between not being able to walk, not being able to go up the stairs, not being able to play with my kids and being horribly depressed all the time and afraid to leave the house as this wonderful social person that I am, you can imagine that if I am just laying in bed not leaving the house, that it's bad. If I have to choose between that life and the life of trying to cover up my loose skin, or flaunt it, or whatever. I will choose the loose skin any day of the week because loose skin can be covered up. Now, granted, I have been married for 24 and a half years. My husband is dearly in love with me. He has been in love with me since I was 225 pounds when we got married, all the way up to 374 pounds. Well, actually, all the way up to, what was I the first time I lost weight? Three, oh gosh, I can't remember my starting weight. The first time I lost 110 pounds. I think I was like 325, something like that, 324. Anyway, he loved me all the way to there, all the way back down to 225, all the way back up to 374, and now all the way back down to this morning, 190. So, gotta love that man. <laughs> gotta love that man. So, I'm not worried about what I look like in the, uh, you know, department. So, because he's happy with me however I am. And he, he loves my new thin body, but he loved my fat body too. He's just a good man. So, I'm not out there trying to, like, attract anyone. I'm not stressed over having necessarily to wear a bathing suit. And I, I don't care what I look like in a bathing suit. I got my bathing suit right here, in fact, right in front of me. Yeah, and it's a halter top. It shows everything. And I don't care. I didn't care in the summer, and I probably won't care next year. Um, as I lose more weight, the skin looks weirder. So, like, at first it was still kind of full of fat, and it just kind of hung. But as I lose even more, um, it begins to look like old lady skin. And I think that's the part that kind of irritates me a little bit. And Like, it's one thing for it to just be hanging there, but it's another thing for it to look like 
you know, 70 year old, 80s year old, papery, thin, way stretched out, old lady skin. Um, I do try and do some things to help with that. So I don't take any supplements, but you can. The only supplement that I take, of course, is my Ritual Vitamins, which has vitamin D3 in it. That's pretty much the only skin supplement that I take just because I just, I get tired of taking pills and I don't know that they really do much, but people do swear by them. So you, you can take biotin and collagen, hair, skin, and nail formulas. Um, I heard something about hy hyaluronic acid might help. Um, vitamin D3 is supposed to, be, supposed to be the best one for hair and nails. So, and skin. I mean, sorry, hair, skin, and nails. So if you're going to take something, start with vitamin D3 because we're deficient in it most of us anyway, especially now that it's winter for most of us. Not you people in Australia. I'm jealous of you right now. But yeah, um, it, in the winter it can be worse. So vitamin D3 is vital not just for our skin, but for our overall health and especially our mental well-being. Okay? So yeah, it isn't attractive. Um, the insides of my thighs look like an elephant. Mm. That I didn't expect that. Like I didn't expect my thighs to like sag. And they do on the insides and not on the outsides. And my butt looks good. Hey, my butt looks good so far. Maybe I haven't lost any fat for my butt yet. Well, at least not all of it. It might sag sometime. But right now it's looking good. So I'm, I'm happy about my, bat, my butt. Um, my back, surprisingly my back has um, skin. It's, I thought it was still fat, but it's really not. I don't really have much left. My back has multiple rolls of loose skin that I was like, Really, I expected my stomach to have it, but not so much my back. So the mental part of it is just like any other mental part of it when it comes to weight loss. Okay, there's a lot of mental crap that you got to deal with when it comes to weight loss. The first mental thing you have to overcome is I can't live without this food. I can't live without eating these things. I cannot survive. Okay, that's your number one. Getting past that one is really hard. Um, it's a huge mental jump to realize that you don't actually need any kind of food to survive. I know that's hard to, hard to imagine, but especially if you're obese, technically you could run on your own body fat for a really long time. Yeah, you'll lose your muscle mass and whatever. I mean, but in all reality, to survive, you don't actually need food, at least not for a really long time. So getting to that place is, I think, the hardest one. I, I really feel like that's the first big, huge step is being able to say, I don't need cake to live. I can live without it. And that's a hard thing to, to embrace, especially if you love cake. You know me. I love my gummy bears. I love, there's lots of things I love. I love taquito. No, no, not taquitos. What are those chips called? D Doritos Dynamitas. I was addicted to those spicy chips. There's lots of things I miss. But I didn't actually need them. And so I had to wrap my brain around that. So that's number one. Then number two, once you get past that and you're like, hey, I can do this. Da -da, look at me. I'm losing weight. I'm losing weight. The f then the one that comes up is, oh, this is going to take forever. I'm going to die. This is going to take forever. I just want to be thin right now. I can't wait so long. It's so much work. It's overwhelming. Okay? So you come up against... The uh, it's going to be forever and I'm never going to make it wall. And that's the big second one that you have to face. You start to get success and you want all the success now. And it's really hard to be patient and wait it through and just do the daily every day. Daily, 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 daily. And admit that it's daily choices that make the difference. Um, the difference between keto and other weight loss programs that at least in my experience, the difference is, is that I can just eat keto and not think about it. So like right now, I'm not tracking anything and I'm able, I'm capable of eating keto and it not being work. Does that make sense? With every other diet I ever did, it was always work, mental work, physical work, emotional work, just so, so much work. And it just felt like it was too difficult to keep going day, day, day working. I just wanted to relax. I just not wanted to not think about it. I just wanted a rest, right? So that is the beauty of keto is that it actually doesn't feel as much like work and it feels 
like something that can be sustainable for the long term right away, which helps get past the I'm never going to make it wall because you know that you can keep doing this for a long amount of time. So that was the next mental thing I had to face was, oh, it's overwhelming how long it's going to take when you're over 300 pounds, close to 400 pounds. It feels like the 100s are eternities away, okay? And I get that feeling because I felt it heavy duty hard that first six months, okay? Once you get past that and you're like, okay, I can do this forever. I can keep going. I don't have to worry. I can do this forever. And you get into your groove and you're losing weight and things are going great. All of a sudden, the one that is more difficult to face that will come up is your emotions. So like something bad will happen or you'll have a party and everything associated with food for that party. You know, a lot of people, they start a diet on January 1st and by Super Bowl Sunday, they're like, oh, I'm just going to give in for Super Bowl Sunday and that's it for the rest of the year, right? <laughs> that's just kind of how it goes sometimes. You have to find a way to deal with stress. I talked about that in my video this morning. Stress, emotions, fear, boredom, all of these things that you used to just eat to distract yourself from, you have to then figure out new ways to deal with them. So that's a huge challenge, okay? And you'll face that before you ever get to the loose skin challenge because the loose skin emotional challenge really doesn't come into play until you are well into your journey and you realize, yeah, it's going to be not attractive. So at first you think, it's not going to be so bad. I have good genes. I'm going to be okay. It won't be as bad as you think. I'll be able to flaunt it. I will be proud of it. And as you lose and lose and lose and lose, and you notice more and more and more of the skin, you start to realize, oh, this is going to be harder than I thought. So yeah, is it hard to face that and, and, and love it? Yeah. It's just as hard to love your loose skin in your new healthy body that you love so much as it is to love your obesity. And I did for years and years. I mean, for 20 years, I was very happy being between 290 and 310. I was thrilled. I thought I was beautiful. I was beautiful. And I, I embraced it. It wasn't until I had lost that weight and felt what it felt like to be thinner and then gained it all back that I got into the misery place. I was very content to be obese and that's why I was probably for most of my adult life because it was way too much work to try and be anything else. And I would just embrace that that's who I was and I loved me who I, who I was, okay? So it's just a new mindset. You have to still love you, love you. And that's the key right there is that you have to love yourself where you're at but still want better for yourself. So I am not against body positivity movement in any way. I love... That people are out there trying to embrace everything about themselves and who they are. The, the one thing that bothers me, though, is that obesity is a health issue. It isn't just a, I have a mole, you know. I have a mole. Oh, yeah, there it is. It isn't just something like that. It, well, I guess that mole could be cancerous, I suppose, but mine aren't. But <laughs> you know what I'm saying. Like, obesity, obesity is an actual health issue. It can actually kill you. So when it comes to the body positivity movement, I'm like all for loving yourself where you're at, but I'm also about loving yourself enough to make things happen. And the thing about keto is that it was the magic pill for me. And that's why I'm so passionate about teaching it to you guys is because <sighs> it was so hard for me to find something that worked that when I found something that worked, I literally wanted to scream it from the rooftops and gather all my obese, beautiful women friends and tell them all oh, it's going to be okay and that we can all actually achieve this goal that we all want. Because if we don't want it, we're just, its you're probably kidding yourself if you think you're not, you don't want it. Everyone wants it because who doesn't want to be able to run when you can't walk? I know I did. I am thrilled that I can run. Do I want to run on a daily basis? Heck no. No, I'm still my same old, same old self. I don't enjoy that kind of thing. 
Some people do. And as they lose weight, they find a new passion. But, you know, that's not me. But I am, am I thrilled that if I feel like I just want to run, I can? Heck yes. Heck yes. And I would take that over, um, I mean, I'd take that with the loose skin over being obese any, any day of the week. It is, I can't tell you how much anxiety it gets rid of when I just can relax and go, oh my gosh, I'm not obese anymore. Just being able to say those words to myself, I, I feel like I breathe a huge sigh of relief. And honestly, the thought of going back there fills me with such horrible fear and anxiety. I don't think I'd ever be able to overcome that at this point in order to ever eat carbs. So when I get to maintenance and I'm thinking about carbs, I'm still going to be really, really afraid to even try to raise my carbs because I'm so, so literally petrified from going back there. And I don't want fear to be the only reason I don't want to go back there. But right now, it's my main motivator. So people are always like, you have such determination. I can't believe you've never cheated. Blah, 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 blah. They're always saying things like this to me. You're such an inspiration. I'm like, no, I'm freaking afraid of my, I'm afraid. I'm scared out of my mind. That's the honest truth. It's not determination. It's fear. I am afraid. I am more afraid of being in that horrible, dark place again than anything I've ever been afraid of in my life. And I'll tell you what, fear is a huge motivator. I'll tell you, it's a huge motivator. And, you know, it's hard for me to admit that I'm not like this most amazing person who has the most amazing determination and like, and I stick to itiveness or whatever. No, I, that's not me. That's not me at all. I mean, I wouldn't have been 20 years at over 300 pounds if that was me. I would have done, I would have done something about a long time ago, but I didn't have a motivation that was strong enough. And now I do. So don't beat yourself up if you if you decide to go off the diet for a while, if you decide to go off plant, just make the choice. Like I've said before, own it, own it. Say, okay, you know what? I want a break. Tomorrow I'm going to eat what I want. And then the next day I'm going right back on and I have my plan and this is my meal plan. This is what I'm going to eat and I'm going to be right back in, in the swing of things. The problem is, is when you give yourself permission to do that and then you can't get back on. And that's what I'm afraid of because I know I am not the determined and motivated person that people think I am. I would screw up and spend a year binging on sugar and be right back where I started. And I'm not willing to risk that. So don't give me more credit than I deserve, you guys. I am literally just the most average, the most boring person that ever was. That's part of the reason why I showed so much of my reality in Vlogmas. Now I am kind of... I am kind of regretting it because of the judgments that's been flying in. But, you know, I realize I'm putting myself out there and people can think what they think and they can say what they want and that's that's YouTube. And I am going to have to get a thicker skin. But my skin is really thin, as we were discussing. It's like paper thin. It looks like old lady skin on a lot of my body. But a lot of my body is not bad. So I am I try to be focusing on the skin that is good. The good places. So, of course, hello, my neck is my favorite thing. No loose skin on my neck. I'm thrilled about that. Relieved, thrilled, 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 okay? My booty looks good. Thrilled about that. The outer thighs and my calves, so far, so good. All that's good. My belly, I was expecting. I've had rolls on my belly since I was 10 years old, so I'm used to that. That doesn't bother me as much. The thighs and the inner thighs, I was kind of like, oh, really? It's really my arms that bother me the most. And if I were to get surgery, I'd want it to be my arms, but I'm more worried about it scarring. And I'm big fat chicken. So people want to know what I consider um, skin removal surgery if money wasn't an issue. Because, you know, money is an issue. It's an issue. I don't have a lot of money. i got nine kids I'm taking care of. My husband makes okay money, but we have nine kids. <sighs> you know? That's the long and short of it right there. We chose to have nine kids, so we chose that we wouldn't be able to have tons of money in savings, which we have like bupkits in savings at the moment. So anyway, <laughs> I don't have the money for it and it's expensive. If I did have the money, would I consider it? Probably yes, but would it just be for me or would it be for you? That I'm not sure. That I'm not sure. I haven't come to the conclusion of whether or not I would be doing it for YouTube or for myself. Because really for myself, I just, 
Other than my arms, I really don't care that much right now. It doesn't bother me that much right now. But I think it would make really good YouTube. Would I be willing to put myself through really bad pain for you guys to just so that you can see what happens? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe. So talk to me next summer about skin again. We will revisit this in the future. So let me let me go up, off the things that I am t doing for mine. Okay. So number one thing I'm doing for mine is vitamin D3. Well, no, number one is genetics. Honestly, if you have bad genetics when it comes to skin, that you're just going to have a harder time of it. If you have good genes with, when it comes to skin, like I do, both my grandmothers looked beautiful when they died. We have good skin in our family, so I have genetics on my side, which is good, okay? Number two, D3. Then the, the third thing is I do a lot of exfoliating. I don't do dry brushing just because it's inconvenient, but I do basically basic exfoliating. So after a bath or after a shower, I rub really vigorously on all of my loose skin areas with a towel. Does it actually help? I don't know, but it makes me feel better. It makes me feel like I'm doing something. I also moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. We're... Utah is a desert, and even though there's tons of snow outside with all the heater going on, the heating going on, it is dry in here. So I moisturize all the time, moisture, moisture, moisture. Um, like I said, I try and soak in the tub and get exfoliate. I use sugar scrubs, things like that, just to try and get some of the old skin away. And so as I lose weight, maybe the new skin will grow in a little tighter. I don't know if there's anything to that theory, but that makes me feel better. Um, I t did decide that I would start taking maintenance breaks as I'm getting closer. Because at first I was just like, let's go, 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 go. I want to lose all the weight. I want to lose all the weight. I want to be thin. I want to be thin. Okay. Then I got to the summer and I was like, I like where I am. I want to stick here for a minute. And so I'm giving my body kind of a, a little bit of a recoup time. I'm still doing my intermittent fasting, which is also supposed to help but I'm eating higher fat calories, so I'm losing weight more slowly. I'm still losing some, but I'm losing it more slowly so that I can kind of give my skin a chance to catch up. So at first, I really wanted to lose it quickly just because I needed to be able to walk. And now that I'm healthy feeling and I'm doing all the things I always wanted to do and I'm wearing the clothes that I wanted to wear, I'm very happy where I am. And so I'm kind of like trying to take a break. So I'm taking a break at the moment, eating higher fat, not higher carb, just higher fat. I'm keeping my proteins the same or a little high. Then in January, I'm going to hit it hard with the weight loss macros again. But I imagine I'm only going to do that for six weeks. And then I'm going to take the dance season, competition season um, off. Then hit it again hard in, in June. And then take off the fall again, possibly. We'll see what, we'll see what happens. That's kind of where my headspace is at. I'm going to try and give myself breaks where I don't lose as quickly at this point now that I'm so close to try and let my skin catch up. So that's my theory. That's all my loose skin information. I don't have anything else to share. That was 30 minutes of me talking and I haven't even read any of your comments. So now I'm going to go back and see if there's anything that I can address from your comments. And then if you have any questions... Start posting them and I will answer them as I can get them. Don't forget if you're in a hurry and you need me to answer your question right away and you want to be nice and donate to my cause, there is a super chat little icon there, a little money icon. You can pay money for your comment to stick at the top so that I don't miss it. I try my best and you guys know I do. I try my best to see everyone's comments and answer everyone. So you do not need to do that. I should be able to get to your question, but if you are in a hurry and you need me to answer right away, please go ahead and do that. I'm grateful for any donations, especially at this time of year, because Christmas for nine kids is a lot. It's a lot, but it's also my most favorite, my most favorite. I love buying gifts for my kids. It's the only time I never feel guilty buying things. All right, so I am going to quickly read through your comments because I love you all and see if I can find... Something. Ah, oh, that is an interesting one. Is keto good for eczema? That I do not know, but it would be worth a try because a lot of eczema is caused by um, food allergies or insen uh, insensitivities. Sensitivities. So I actually have a couple of kids with eczema. My three year old, well, he'll be three next week. <laughs> my baby he has eczema actually he was basically 
born with it. He, he got a really big patch of it on the back of his leg that never went away when he was two months old. It took us a while to determine that when he eats dairy products, it flares. So I actually took him off dairy. But going keto and getting back to, especially if you're going to do whole foods keto, where you're doing paleo type stuff, where you're not doing a lot of processed things, um, it can definitely help with skin issues, especially if they were caused by in, caused by sensitivities. You may have sensitivity to gluten, and going off gluten free would improve your eczema immensely. So, it's worth a try. If it doesn't improve doing doing keto with dairy, try eliminating dairy as well, and just see if that works. But yeah, it it can definitely dietary change can definitely improve eczema because a lot of times it's allergy related. All right. I do not look 44. Well, YouTube has a filter, I have to say. There you go. <laughs> Did you guys see my video yesterday where I was stressed out of my mind and I didn't have makeup and I'm going like this, uh, I'm freaking out. That's the real me right there, people. That's the real me on a daily basis. Yeah. Uh, PJ says, you've had many children, so pain tolerance would be extremely high. I don't know about that because... <sighs> As kind of a wimp in childbirth, I did have two home births, one of them in water, at 310 pounds. <laughs> but it sucked, and I hated it. And the last couple, last three, I had an epidural. So I'm not the perfect pain tolerance person. <laughs> yes, people can be judgy, but, you know, usually people who are judgy are pretty hard on themselves, too, and they're just not happy. And so I try and approach it from that side and think, what... What could be in this person's life that they feel so miserable that they want to try and make other people miserable? And you know what? All her comments were valid. I should have brushed my kid's hair. I should have taken a shower. Should have done a lot of things. Couldn't do any of them. <laughs> Couldn't. That was why it was funny. I thought it was funny. I, I don't, I don't come across. It didn't come across as funny as it really was. It was so funny that when I told Dave the story about what happened at the Walmart, about the people... Um, thinking that we didn't have any money, <sighs> um, which we technically didn't. And that's the thing. I, I, I made light of it. We made light of it, but I had actually spent it all by accident. So in the clip before where I'd gone and bought myself all that crap, I bought myself the face mask and the Christmas tree that I'd been wanting, the little Christmas tree plant and all this stuff that I'd really been wanting to indulge in. And I had miscalculated how much money we had left in our account. And I had put our account in the negative. And that was during the first trip, right before I took Oliver to go get strep tested. I had called Dave crying, saying how I had ruined my birthday because I would spent all the money on me. And now we couldn't go out. And it was another time we weren't able to go on a date. And we hadn't been on a date in like three months. And we were dying to go out. And we'd been looking forward to it. And I spent all the money wasn't very impressed with myself at that moment. And I didn't have time to take all the stuff back to Walmart, which is what I really wanted to do. But I couldn't because of Oliver and his gosh dang strep throat. And the doctor's office took like so long that by the time I got home and made my food, I realized, oh no, I don't actually have time to eat. I don't actually have time to brush their hair. I don't even have time to look at them. I basically yelled at the kids and said, because I had told them they could all go if they had cleaned their jobs and they had while I was gone. So I couldn't just not take them even though they looked terrible. I basically said, whoever's in the car in three minutes gets to go to Walmart with me. And I didn't even look at them, which is why it was so funny when I see Ruby walking around Walmart in shorts, no jacket, and two different boots that didn't even match and with the same foot. I threw those boots out, by the way. Those boots will never be seen again. They are gone. <laughs> threw them away. I was like, how do we still have this? These boots, they're so bad. It was hilarious, you guys. It was hilarious. And I was in Walmart actively filming them. And so everyone was noticing. And people were laughing at us. like, And they were talking to us. So it was more than just what I showed on the video. It was this huge, hilarious thing that didn't come across because I cut so much out trying to make the video short for you guys. I am now making that video. I think it will come out. Not tomorrow because I'm doing a special video tomorrow. I'm doing like a Christmas collab tomorrow. It'll come out, I think, Thursday. So keep an eye on I'm, I'm going to try and get the hilarity of it over, to come across better in that one. Because it was so funny that I ended up in the situation. It was not the plan. 
<laughs> yeah, I planned to not shower all day. Are you kidding me? I hate that. I was going to take a bath. That was the point, right? I was supposed to have a lovely two-hour relaxing bath. And instead, I spent those two hours in the doctor's office with my 16-year-old because he was horribly sick. <laughs> It is what it is. It is what it is. But yeah, we really didn't have money. And so when the lady gave me the money, my initial reaction was to give it back. And I looked at her and I said, are you sure? And she's like, yes, yes, I'm very sure. And she has this beautiful smile on her face. And if you had seen the look of joy and love that this woman was giving me when she was handing me that money, she truly felt like she was making huge, huge difference in my life. Okay. She was blessing me with her whole soul. There was no way I was giving that money back to her, even if I had been a millionaire. No way would I have taken that away from her. That gift of her feeling like she was doing this great, wonderful thing, and she felt so happy about it. So there was, you couldn't see that in the video. There's no way for me to like get across the actuality of the day. It, I, I tried to show it to the best of my ability, but it's just not possible. It's not possible. And to come on and just basically say, you care so much about how you look and then you just don't even like brush your kid's hair and that's an extension of you and you should be worried about how they look because it makes you look bad. I'm like, do I care if I look bad? Have you watched this channel very often? The only time I really ever do my makeup is for this. And that's only because I have to sit here and stare at my face for an hour while I talk to you guys. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't. Like, appearances are literally the last thing on my mind. Last thing on my mind. I, I thought it was cute and funny that we ended up in Walmart looking like we didn't have a place to live. And apparently, people thought that that was terrible. So, you know, whatevs. Whatevs. I still wish people well who think that. And it's okay. Like, you can think that if you want to. I mean, it's, you're right. You're right. Should I have brushed my kids' hair? Heck, yes. They looked awful. Should I have washed the Oreos off their face? Mm-hmm. Should they have eaten Oreos for breakfast? Mm-mm. Duh. Yeah. Anyway, it was just a terrible day. Okay. Got it. Got it. Got it. Oh, Sarah, you, you struggle with legs and arms, too. Oh, gotta love it. Gotta love it. But you know what? It's our badge of courage, right? It's our badge. It's our badge of honor that shows the the battle we've beaten. You know, that's one thing about the loose skin on my arms is if I am walking around with it showing, I know when people are looking at me, going, judging my arms, going, "Girl, you should cover those up. That's bad." That they're also thinking, "Dang, I wonder how much weight she's lost," because there's no way you got that just being growing older, especially because I don't look as old as I am. At least that's what people keep telling me. I actually met a lady who's older than me who looks way younger than me yet last night. I was like, hey, we should be twins. Ironically, she also has eight kids, actually nine, because she lost one. Her second child died. So she technically has nine kids. And she birthed all of them. <laughs> and she's a blogger. And I was like, we're twins. And we both had good skin. I don't know. Maybe there's something to do with that. Is there something to do with that? I don't know. Might be a thing. All right. Let's see. You enjoyed watching my makeup routine. Good. I was worried it would be too redundant because I also did it on hide and seek, but I didn't know how many people had already seen it. So I hoped it wasn't going to be too redundant, but I wanted to show you guys that I my makeup routine is very simple. And I usually don't actually do... Um, eyeshadow the reason I did was because Ronnie bought me that eyeshadow for my birthday and I wanted to try it but yeah my makeup routine is very simple I don't really and I don't do it every day in fact today I didn't actually this is still the makeup from yesterday most of it I kind of touched up a couple of things like underneath my eyes but most of it's just left over <laughs> all right let's see What's with the drone guy? Do you, hey, drone channel, dude, if you're still here, which I doubt, um, I actually do create with drone as well over on Hide and Seek. So if you want to connect with me over there, I'll check out your stuff. Just remind me later because when you come on here, I don't, I don't have time to look at your channel. But I'd love to see what you're coming up with because my drone is sucky 
so, and mostly I just filmed my house, but you know, it was a cheap drone. It was only $300 and it was my kid's birthday present. Okay. Kaylin says she's about hit to hit her six month mark and she's feeling tons better about it. It's going to take forever to get there. Good. Yeah. I'm trying to think of when I got there. I think it was close to losing 100 pounds when I finally realized it wasn't going to be forever. And I think that's when I started YouTube because I started getting really confident in it. Before that, I was still trepidatious and thinking I didn't really want people to know I was doing a diet plan because I didn't think people would like, I didn't want people watching me and waiting for me to fail. You know, it was, I think when I hit the 100 pounds that I finally got confident that it was going to actually make it this time. And so I started the YouTube channel So it's because I wanted to help other people do it. And that's, I think, when my, and that was eight months in when I lost my 100 pounds. Eight months in is when I started YouTube. All right. Let's see. I agree. If you don't have anything nice to say, you shouldn't say anything at all. I try really hard. I try really hard. Um, I go fund me for my skin surgery. It might work, but it's just like me asking for donations on here or even suggesting people go to my Teespring. I had people say, oh, you're selling merch now? Oh, I'm out of here. I'm like, well, you know, I spend, let's see, multiple hours a day videotaping, editing, and I don't get paid. I get paid like 150 to 200 a month just from the AdSense. It's not enough to for a part-time job. I mean, would you work a part-time job for $200 a month? Who would do that? The only reason I do it, well, okay, there are two reasons that I do it. The number one, I want to help you guys lose weight. That is it. I started this channel to help other people lose weight. I never in a million years thought I would have enough subscribers to ever make a dime. I never intended for it to be a money thing, ever. Now that I'm making money on it, I'm grateful because I need that money, as you well know. I need it, okay? And I'm devoting a lot more time to it than I expected. Even before I started my other channel, it was already a lot more time than I expected to be investing in something that didn't make money, okay? So, and then the number two reason that I do YouTube, both channels, is creativity. I love being creative. I have, I was born a creative person. I'm very disorganized, very creative. I, it, when I was younger, I was into the arts and singing. My voice has since disappeared. I don't have a voice anymore. I have lost a lot of my vocal. And I have a lot more raspy sounding voice than I used to have. My voice is much different I, and I cannot sing anymore. And I miss that and I'm sad about that, but I have new outlets for my creativity. So there was a long time when I did painting and there was a long time when I did drawing and there was a long time when I did writing and none of those things were really like my thing. And it wasn't until I was 32 and I started photography that I found creating in the visual digital space. And I only wish I'd found YouTube sooner because YouTube is even more me than photography ever was because I am able to really hone in on what makes me me like we talk about on hide and seek seek your truth what makes you unique what makes you true and I am finding my own truth at 44 I'm finding what makes me unique and what makes me special and YouTube is a creative way for me to share it with the world so I don't really want to do a GoFundMe for anything because I feel like I look like I'm begging for stuff. I want to earn it. The Teespring, I freaking designed those. The lady, I was like, go to my Teespring if you're worried about what my car looks like and you want me to have a better car so that you can see not a not crappy car. Like, I have a crappy car. I can't afford a new car. Duh. Like, if I could afford a new car, would I buy one? Heck yes. But I cannot afford one. So here's my Teespring. Go buy a shirt. She says, make your own money. What does that even mean? I designed the shirt. Buy one. You want you want me to have a better car than help me make an actual living doing this. Otherwise, I just don't get like what that even means. Like I am. I am working my tail off for, for this channel, for the other channel. I am working to the bone. I'm literally up till 1 a.m. every single night. I get up at 7 a.m. every morning. I'm filming all flipping day. And I have to be creative when I'm filming. I can't just film whatever. I have to think, oh, this has to have a story. There has to be a point, especially with Vlogmas for this channel. I can't just show my day because my day is about my kids and that's going on the other channel. So I have to come up with something to talk about. 
So like for today, I don't even know what I'm going to talk about. Probably just dance because that's what I'm doing today. It's a lot of work, guys. It's a lot of work. And so I'm like, when she said that, make your own money, I'm like, what do you think I'm trying to do? Uh, anyway. Girl, if you're on here, which I highly doubt, like, come up with a better re way for me to make money then. I'm not going to ask. I don't really want to ask for GoFundMe. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. <laughs> okay. Uh, apparently Dr. Berg and Dr. Barry both have skin videos. So I know mine's not as helpful as theirs because I haven't really done anything for mine. I'm not concerned about mine that much. I really am not as concerned as I probably should be. And I don't have time to watch YouTube. So I'm probably not going to watch their videos. But if you guys want to know more about it, you should check them out. Because, especially Dr. Barry because he's brilliant. And Dr. Berg is not my favorite person. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But Dr. Barry is awesome. So go watch his video. All right. Let's see. Okay, so Tiffany David said, I've recently read that prolonged fasting would allow the body to cannibalize itself and loose skin would become reduced. Has anyone tried a 72-hour fast? People have tried 72-hour fast. I know that um, uh, Keto Kelly, is it Kelly Gist? Oh my gosh. Keto Kelly. She does 72-hour fasts because of cancer. She wants to keep cancer at bay. Um, I personally do not extend my fast past 24 hours. Um, there really isn't 100% proof that autophagy is improved above a 16 hour fast, which is why intermittent fasting is so great, um, or even a 24 hour fast. And there is science out there, at least according to Dr. Finney, that says extended fasting can permanently alter your metabolism and make it more difficult for you in the future to keep weight off. To me, the skin is way less important to me than my metabolism is. And so I'm not willing to risk it by doing an extended fast to try and rebuild my cells. In theory, that is true. Autophagy, if you fast long enough, your body will rebuild its cells. It will eat itself, and but it also will eat your muscle. And it, I just wouldn't, I just wouldn't, I, I don't recommend it. So until there's really, really hard and fast proof, I don't know that would, and I still don't even think it would be worth it with the proof that there is against the metabolism. Um, uh, if you want to know where I get that information, oh, where did I get it? Oh, I want to say it was at the conference last year. What's that one called? Breckenridge, I think. Dang it. I've lost it. Dr. Finney actually went and spoke on the subject of extended fasting. And it was on Keto Bre Breckenridge, I want to say. Ugh, dang it. Uh, the Keto Connect also talked about it on their channel um, when they went. They went to some low-carb conference, and it, that's where Dr. Finney spoke about it. Okay. Let's see. Do you think compression garments could help? Um, possibly. I just don't know that it would do that much good because the skin isn't really there from, from gravity, it's there from being stretched out. And the, really the only way to fix it is to get rid of the old scale, skin cells and and improve it with new ones. And I don't know that it would really, I don't know. Compression is good to keep edema out, but I just can't imagine other than maybe keeping it from stretching more from edema if you're having issues with that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I really don't know on that. I'm sorry. <laughs> maybe? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Also, I just don't really feel like waist training is the best thing to do because when you're when you're being supported by a corset, just like way back in the day, um, you lose your stomach muscles, and that's not good for you. So, I don't know. But I also don't care if I have a really skinny waist, you guys. I don't really care about that stuff. You know, I was just watching Keto in Canada and she's going on and on about how she wants to have this hard body and she can't deal and all this stuff. And I'm like, Joanna, like, you look beautiful. I will never look like her. Never in a million years. She looks so good and I will never, ever look like her. But I also 
see her point. She has put so much work and time and effort into trying to attain that hard body that she's picturing that she wants and has been unable to achieve it. I would be depressed too. If I had put that much work into something and it was getting me nowhere, heck yeah. Would it bother me? Yes. But I think she just needs to get to a place where she can embrace that what she is, is the perfect body. That we don't need to have a hard body to be perfect. We were meant to be soft. We were meant to be soft. We're women. Men were meant to be hard and hardworking and muscly. And girls can be. But it's not how we were built, I don't believe. So, honestly, I don't care that much about my waist. Other than I'm tired of my rolls hanging out and bouncing around whenever I'm doing work. I mean, exercise, not exercise, uh, dance. But that's about the only reason. So, yeah. Okay, so Tori says, I was in church on Sunday and I was telling someone about my better blood sugar results and she started telling you, telling you what to do. And that's why you don't talk to people about stuff. Yeah, I, I get that. I get that a lot too. In fact, that lady that I met last night that had the eight kids and is a blogger and everything. So she was asking me how I lost the weight and I kind of told her and she was like, oh yeah, I'm a nutritionist. And then she starts telling me like recipe ideas and stuff and I'm like... I thought it, it was kind of irritating, but I'm like, I hope I don't do that to people. I hope that people ask me questions, I give genuine answers, and I don't like trying and imply that they have to do that. I always say, your mileage may vary. You may not find this to be your experience. I'm only telling you what happened for me, and that's really the truth. I mean, I'm not a doctor. Everyone knows I'm not a doctor, scientist, nutritionist, nothing. And I'm just telling you, like, what worked for me, and that's it. But I'm good at telling people what worked for me. So if I were to meet you in real life, I'd probably try and help you with advice too because I'd feel like maybe it would help. I don't know. But yeah, I hear you. It's hard. It's hard. You have to be really confident. Be really confident in what you're doing. And you have to take over the conversation a bit and not let the other person, like if the other person starts trying to tell you what to do, you could be like, yeah, I totally get that. I have done blah, blah, blah. And this is what I'm doing. And I've researched this and blah, blah, blah. And just try and keep the conversation centered on you and your progress and not let them get a word in. I'm good at that. I bet you can't tell. <laughs> Yes, the creative thing is, it is obsessive and I feel like it completes me. I Right now, my obsession is YouTube. I can't guarantee that in the future it will be YouTube still. But I probably will get to a point, at least with my family channel, it's my goal to get to a point where it is our sole source of income and my husband can stay home and I can actually see him. I never see him. I don't know if you noticed, but I don't see him very much. So us going on a date the other night was huge because we don't see each other. Ever. I I am home homeschooling and videotaping all day. Then I'm at dance studio till 9, 9.30 most nights. He makes dinner and he works outside. And I go upstairs when I get home at 9. I grab He grabs food for me. He brings it up to me while I'm editing. That's when I see him. Here's your dinner. Hi, hun. Thank you. He goes out, works on cars, works on the yard till about 11, 12 o'clock. And I work on videos and he comes up and he sits in bed and watches me work on videos till he falls asleep and I finish the videos around one or two and then I go to bed. And that is the extent of our relationship right now. It's hard. It's hard. And I really like to make enough money on YouTube and he really believes that I will. He would never put up with me working so much on something that makes so little. If he didn't believe that someday it will pay off, he is 100% behind me, cheering me on. He is the one who made me do the freaking Teespring. He's been bugging me to do it for months. So any of you who are generous enough to buy a t-shirt, I'm really grateful. I'm sorry that the carnivorous t-shirts are so freaking expensive. When you put a, something on the front and the back, it like practically doubles the price of the shirt, which is dumb. If you go on page two, there's Keto and the Chaos ones that are cheaper that are just printed on one side. So I tried. It, I don't know how it works. I'm, I'm doing the best I can. But yeah, anyway. La, 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 la. Oh, and I am not, just so you guys know, I am not a supporter of Dr. Fung. And neither is Dr. Finney. So I just, there's just not enough science to, for me to get behind him. Ah, oh, thank you for the compliments. I love you guys. You're awesome. 
Okay. <laughs> I love how Tammy's always reminding people to hit the thumbs up. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, why isn't Dr. Berg my favorite person? I don't like talking about that because it makes people uncomfortable because Dr. Berg is everybody's like god of keto and crap. But okay, there are a few reasons why I do not support Dr. Berg. Okay. Number one is that he claims to be a doctor and he is not. He is a chiropractor and I have nothing against chiropractors. I use them. I have a personal chiropractor that comes to my house. We do trade work for him and he comes to my house and adjusts, and adjusts my whole family. I love chiropractors, but he is not a doctor. Okay. Number two, his recommendation of seven cups of veggies a day is ridiculously excessive. Not necessary. Take a multivitamin. Number three, his potassium recommendations are borderline dangerous levels and he doesn't give enough information, in my opinion, on how to make sure you don't overdose on potassium. You can overdose on potassium and die. That. Those three things are the main reasons. Then the number four, that is the clincher for me. He's always hawking his ridiculous powders. Now I know, I want, he's making his money and he's doing his thing. I, I don't have a problem with him selling the powders except it's just so much easier to make your own powders and you don't need his powders and he makes you feel like you do and they are expensive. So I get that he's starting a product because he wants to, he needs to make a living. We all need to make a living. And I, obviously I want to make a living too. But one thing that, that I, I have had many companies come to me asking me to do, um, sponsorships and, um, you know, hawk their products. Okay. And I've turned them all down so far because none of them go with my channel's philosophy, which is you don't need pills and products to be successful. Losing weight. You don't need to pay anyone to lose weight. You can do it yourself just like I did. Now you need the information and I'm giving you the information for free. I'm not charging you for that. I'm trying to make money just off YouTube alone and off the merchandise or whatever else, if you guys want to buy a t-shirt, it's not the same as me saying you cannot be successful on keto if you take, unless you take this special potassium powder. You see what I'm saying? So that, it just rubs me the wrong way. It comes across to me as very MLM marketing. I know it's not an MLM, but MLMs take advantage of obesity and they make money off people who are desperate. And I feel like Dr. Berg is doing the same thing. He gives a lot of free information. You got to give him credit. And he has helped a lot of people be successful. If you follow Dr. Berg, I have no fault with you. But I also am not going to recommend him for those reasons. Does that make sense? I hope I didn't offend anybody. I don't really like talking about Dr. Berg. But there are just such better doctors out there. Dr. Barry is great. Dr. Westman. Dr. Finney. Dr. Volek. Those are the ones who are out there doing the legitimate science, okay? Finney and Volek are doing the legitimate science. If you want them to personally guide you on how to do this, they will. But it's $349 a month. But they will personally guide you, their team. So if you want to pay money, pay money for actual doctors and scientists. Don't waste money on things you don't actually need. Does that make sense? And if the, Dr. Finney ever, just so you know, if you're watching this Finney group, if Dr. Finney ever would like me to do an ad for him, I would do it in a heartbeat because I do it all the time. <laughs> Vertahealth.com, V-I-R-T-A-H-E-A-L-T-H.com. There you go. Okay. Running out of time, guys. I hope I get to everybody's questions. I'm, I'm, I'm looking. Okay. If you want surgery, you could write into the doctor's television show for advice. Sometimes they'll do surgery and comp it. Hmm. That would be fun. <laughs> I'd love to be on TV. That would be fun. I would love that. Hey, Kate Collins. Oh, and Aslan Return. I didn't notice that was your first two. Welcome. Um, yeah, if you, if you like, if you like any video, it helps it show more on YouTube. So 
if you guys do anything, commenting and liking the videos, even disliking the videos, and even commenting bad things helps me, believe it or not. The more interaction, the more my videos will pop up in suggested videos for other at other channels and I'll get more people that see me and I'll get more subscribers I'll get more viewers and I get more ad watches and then I get more money that's the honest truth one thing I ask is that you do not click on ads just to click them to help me I ask that you click on only the ads that offer services or products that you are genuinely interested in learning more about because I don't want to be ever accused of asking or paying for ads, you know, because that can get your channel shut down in a hurry. So make sure that if, if you want to watch the ad all the way through, awesome, that helps me too. But um, if you're going to click it, make sure it's something you're just really interested in and you're not just clicking every ad that you see just to be nice because that can get people in trouble on YouTube. All right. <laughs> Richard from Keto Nation is still talking about me, huh? Uh, I might watch it. I don't know. I don't really want to go there. <laughs> That's nice to know. I'm grateful that he's not holding my tantrum against me. I did tantrum against him and he did get offended and I feel bad, but sometimes I am not perfect and I do get kind of ornery. You know, I'm a girl. <laughs> my poor husband. Oh. <sighs> Oh, wow, Sarah, I'm really surprised to hear you say that about him losing his street cred with the push for supplements. Yeah, I know it's just because he needs to make a living, but there's just better ways to make a living. I mean, I just, I'm all about coaching. Like, if, like I think it's great what Sarah does. Did you know guys know that Sarah Pearls of Wisdom is an actual keto coach? She has a website. You guys should go check it out because she's awesome. And, and that's an amazing way to make money. And I think it's so good to coach people one-on-one. -on -one and that is a valid, wonderful way to make money. But me, when people are people av av advertising supplements and shakes that are not necessary to actually be successful, that's what bugs me. I mean, I'm all for if you wanted to, to drink a shake, I'm not going to tell you not to like they do on ketogenic dieters. By all means, drink a shake if you want. Buy which one you want. But I'm not going to be going, you must have the keto chaos shake in order to succeed. See what I mean? Yeah. But I would like to advertise products that I use. Like, gosh, I wish that Creo Brew and Ritual Vitamins and let's see who else. Oh, the I just advertised those wax strips. Flamingo wax strips. And who else have I advertised? Mio Water Enhancer and Faya Yogurt. They should give me a call and pay me money for their ads because I do them all the time. But I don't make money off of it. I just love their stuff. And that's all, that's different. And even if like a keto company wanted me to advertise like a chocolate bar or, you know, something good like that, as long as they were willing to let me review it honestly, I would totally do a review for them. But I'm not going to come on and say you can't do that. You can only do this if you drink keto creamer and eat keto manna or whatever those new things that keep popping up in my Facebook feed are that I haven't tried yet. There is an ice cream company in Utah that I keep hoping will ask me to, to review their ice cream. It's called Rebel Creamery. If you guys haven't heard of Rebel Creamery, check it out. It's so much better than Halo Top. It's way low carb like Arctic Zero, but it supposedly tastes really good. So when I get paid tomorrow, I'm going to buy myself some Rebel Creamery ice cream. I'm going to actually try it. I keep hoping that they would like, you know, offer me free stuff. But so far, no. Not yet. I'm not big enough yet, I guess. I don't know. Almost to 10,000 though, guys. Did you see we're almost to 9,000 as of this morning? Holy cow. Can't even believe it. Oh yeah, exogenous ketones, just don't get me started. Waste of money. Waste of money. Don't even go there. I actually feel bad because one of my one of my subscribers um and who is also a Facebook friend, was advertising for that keto coffee the other day. And I kind of lit into her friend and was kind of like, I can't believe you're advertising this coffee. And then I felt really bad because apparently she only did it because she needed help to try and help for Christmas. And they were offering a $300 like drawing, like she was going to get in a drawing for $300. So then I felt like a total heel for wrecking that for her because she ended up having to pull the post down because she was like, 
I guess I shouldn't advertise for this crappy company because it is a crappy company. And then I felt bad because I miss, made her miss out on a chance to get money. And sure, her husband died in April and she has four kids. And so I felt like really bad. Amanda, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <sighs> Love it. Love how I screw things up all the time. Because, you know, I'm real and I'm not perfect. <laughs> all right. Let's see. Yeah, I Amazon. Okay, so Amazon would be a good one. Amazon affiliates. The problem is, is that I don't qualify. So you have to have a website. And I lost my website because I couldn't afford to pay for it anymore. I lost my website over a year ago. I don't even have a photography website anymore. And so to get started on that is just going to be complicated in and of itself. And in order to qualify for Amazon affiliates, you have to have to actually have a website. And I don't have a website yet. I will eventually when I get to that point. But right now, I just don't have time to even think about it, let alone build it. Because I would have to be basically starting back over from scratch. I've looked into like a Wix site or... You know, some things like that. But even it, it just takes too much of my time. I don't have enough time already. It just, I just, I have to homeschool my kids and I have to make videos. And there's literally no more time for anything else. So I'm working on it. But I can't do Amazon links until I got that taken care of. <sighs> Which is frustrating. Because I know that would help a lot. Because I'm always talking about things I buy on Amazon. Oh, did I make any dollars on my magazine spread? Nope. No. They paid the photographer. They paid the clothes designer, which is ridiculous since I'm the one who bought my own clothes. So I don't even know what she was there for. But they paid her. They paid the makeup artist that did my hair and makeup. I could have done my own hair and makeup. Whatever. Pay they could have made I they could have paid me to do my own hair and makeup, do my own photos, which probably would have been better. And Write the article, because I could write an article, too, because it's, like, this whole big. Everyone is getting paid but me. So, it better pay off. And they better not do to me what they did to Lauren Brazy and completely lie and put her in some random article that they thought she wouldn't see, saying she did something she didn't actually do. That That is all I have to say about that. If they do that to me, I will rain hellfire down upon them. It will not be pretty. <laughs> This article better be good. There better be an amazing picture of me. And it would be nice if it was also on the cover. Because other, because I deserve to be paid for my story. I deserve to be paid for the four hours I stood there like a moron holding a plate and smiling and doing faces. Right? Yeah. They didn't even actually make me sign anything. Other than a model release for the photos. They haven't made me sign anything that says I give them permission to use my story at all or anything. There's no contract. Literally no contract. So if anything were to happen, I don't think I have any recourse because there's no contract between the two of us. It was all verbal. There's no written contract at all. I also haven't heard from them in a while. I haven't heard from them at all since early November. And this article is supposed to come out in a month. And I am nervous because I thought that I was going to get to see an okay, like the actual article itself and the photo before they put it out. And now I'm starting to get nervous that I'm not going to get to see it. So, yeah. No, I didn't make any dollars on that. My only hope is that people will see it and come to my channel and that I will get my viewership increased. That's the only way I'm going to make money off this deal. But in turn, I will also be able to help so many more people. So that's my hope is that I just get to be able to help more people. Because that's the point of this channel. If I can't help people, then why be here? I don't have anything to say if I'm not helping people. I don't want to talk about just me and how I lost weight. I want to talk about you and how you're doing and help you lose weight. That's the point. So if I get the chance to help a lot more people, then I will be thrilled but I did pick up first for women the other day and I was like I really hope this I really hope that this woman is not right and that it's not in first for women and that it is in women's world because the way they photographed me and the way they're writing the article fits better with the women's world design than it does for for first for women first for women was basically just a 
magazine full of ads and hardly any articles and hardly any pictures. And the pictures I did see weren't like the ones I did, I photographed for. So I'm really hoping that it's women's world and not first for women, to be completely honest. And I'm really kind of just irritated because I deserve more than just a little blurb in the corner. I'm kind of mad that it's worked out the way that it's worked out. I feel like taken advantage of a little bit. I don't know. If it pans out, I won't. And so that's why I really don't want to knock the magazine until I see what happens. By the end of January, if I haven't had a huge increase in viewership, or if they do anything ridiculous like they did to Lauren Brazy on her article, I will probably go on a vendetta against them. Because it's not right. It's not right. You should pay everyone, including your model. Why, as, if I'm standing there modeling, if they were hiring a model, they would have paid her. I don't know. That's just how I feel. All right. Anyway. Oh, do I like Jimmy more? Nope. Oh, no. No. I appreciate Jimmy more and how he got keto to the forefront of the community. And he was the original pioneer pushing things out there. But Jimmy Moore just comes up with excuse after excuse after excuse of why he is not losing weight. And the honest truth of it is, is that he's just eating too much fat. He just needs to cut back on fat. And he's always pushing products because that's what he does. And when he does his, his big, what do you call those? conferences when he's standing up there all fat saying well don't look at me as the example yeah that doesn't work for me that doesn't fly if what you're selling doesn't obviously work on you how are you selling it that's as bad as an MLM it's bad as these people hawking shakes and cheating and doing keto behind the behind the scenes and saying the shakes are what did it mm -mm. that's not right that is not right and that's kind of how I feel like he is. He's like saying, don't look at me, but look at all these people that I've helped. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Keto cakes. They might actually let me do a commercial someday. You never know. I'm going to mention it to them, but I'm waiting until they do shipping. As soon as they have shipping, I'm going to say, hey, I have a huge audience of 10,000 people that want keto cakes. Do you want an ad? How much are you willing to pay for it? <laughs> that's, it's on my agenda. Trust me. I will be calling them because they are local. It'll make it so easy to do it. Okay. Ten cups of veggies? Good Lord. Ugh. I can barely get one cup a day in me. Maybe I don't need enough, but I'm perfectly fine. I don't know. Yeah. Well, be sure to buy the magazine, just the one with the one me in it. Don't make sure that they get money off the one they put me in. Don't buy it right now. Don't buy it with anyone else in it. Well, no, that's not true. Because, like, there's someone being taken advantage of in every one. If you look, you'll see almost exactly the same thing as me. And it'll say, little blurb, so-and-so lost a lot of weight doing blah, blah, blah. And it doesn't give any contact information for the person or anything about them in any way to so that they could get anything out of it. So mine better say my freaking YouTube channel. That's all I have to say. Okay, it's not all I have to say, but it's one of the things I have to say. <laughs> oh, how do you locate the t-shirts? Okay, it is in the description of the last few videos, but the address is um, www.teespring, so teespring.com slash stores slash keto hyphen chaos. So I hope that that helps. But yeah, like if you look in the, if you look at all my vlogmases, it's in the about, like comments, not the comments, but the about section. Um, it'll say like Christmas merch. It's got this little thing and then it has the link. I hope the link is right. Haven't sold the t-shirt yet. So I'm hoping that people have actually found it. If not, then I'm sorry. I'm trying. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Aslan return you're an English instructor and you made a mistake with your spelling I hear you on that I I'm an English nerd and I am a grammar nerd and yeah 
I hear you on that. I try really hard not to mess things up like that, especially, oh, you know what else drives me crazy is when I say grammar incorrectly and I'm watching it back on video. So I'll always say like stuff, like stupid stuff that I really hate, like, oh, you did so good instead of well. Ugh. And I go back and I'm like, oh, Tamara, that's so bad. And I know no one else cares, but I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Okay, well, I, Midnight Blossom, I appreciate that Dr. Berg saved your life. Like, I appreciate it because he is giving good information about keto. I'm not saying that. I'm not knocking his information about keto, okay? And I think it's amazing and awesome that you have lost 136 pounds thanks to his advice. I would be 100% behind him too if he was the only doctor I'd ever heard of and the only one that I'd studied. Just like I am 100% behind Dr. Finney for that reason. But the difference between Dr. Finney and Dr. Berg is that Dr. Finney is an actual legitimate scientist who'd been studying and eating a ketogenic way for over 20 plus years. And the only thing he's hawking is actual curing di type 2 diabetes and an app where he himself or his team helps you. Yes, it is expensive. $350 a month is ridiculous. I don't think anyone could pay that, but people do. Is it worth it? Yeah. To have an actual scientist, doctor, a literal one, who knows this stuff inside and out, backward and forward, and is on a mission to cure type 2 diabetes? Yes. Dr. Berg selling his powders is as bad as snake oil. And that's what bothers me about him. Just so you know, the information he's giving you is great. But not everything he says is absolutely true. That isn't true. You do not need to eat 7 to 10 cups of vegetables to be healthy. It's literally not true. You do not need the fiber because your electrolytes are what controls your movement of your intestines. You do not need all of those micronutrients because you can pop a multivitamin that has everything in it. You do not need them for survival. There is no necessary carbohydrate that you actually need. Not any, not one. That is the truth. And he is trying to convince you that you have to eat that much vegetables and you have to have your special powders in order to be healthy. And that is not true. Simply not true. So I've lost 187 pounds based on Dr. Finney's information and he's never sold me a dang thing. All of his information is available for free online to study or for buying his book, The Art and Science of Low Carbohydrate Living or his other book, um, New Atkins for New You. That's the only money I've given to Dr. Finney is I bought his books. Ah, I, I would be happy to mentor one-on-one -on -one if anyone is interested. Please feel free to email me if you're interested in that. I do not have a price range. I wouldn't even know where to start with it. We'd have to figure it out. You could be my guinea pig. My email is ketochaos at gmail.com. If you really want me to mentor you one-on-one, -on -one, I would be happy to do it. The only thing I cannot do is make you an actual food plan. I can help you to create your own food plan and I can give you advice on how to do that. But all of that information is really on my YouTube channel already. So I really would just be handholding you and you could me message me at any time asking questions and I would answer them right away. That's the only difference between what I'm doing here and doing a private mentorship. So I can't really give nutrition information like plans because I'm not a nutritionist and it's illegal for me to do so. All right. Okay. Nicole, you say I, you love how open and honest I am because I'm an open book. Yeah, I tell people everything. I have no filter. <laughs> Who's messaging me? My phone keeps vibrating. I wonder why. It's weird. We've been talking for like an hour and a half. I should probably stop talking eventually. But I keep trying to make sure I don't lose anything. Okay. That's awesome. Okay, y'all. <laughs> I sometimes say y'all and I don't live in the South and then I feel really stupid, but I, I do it sometimes. The link does work. For some reason, it's one, it's not highlighted in blue, but you copy and paste it. So it's not work, link, it's not clickable. I don't know how to fix that. I wonder what I did wrong on that. I'll mess with it. Thank you for the heads up. I appreciate that. Wendy, you bought a t-shirt. Did you buy one of the keto ones or one of the hide and seek ones? I didn't know I sold any 
keto chaos ones. I'll have to go look, but I know I sold a couple hide and seek ones and I'm thankful to those of you who bought it. So if, if it's you, I'm grateful. That was really nice of you. <laughs> Sullivan worked hard on that design. I paid him for it. I actually paid my kid for that design. Just so you know, I paid him 50 bucks to draw me that finger. Jasper, thumbs up. All right. Um, Dr. Westman's protocol, what you're talking about, um, 20 grams of fat, fatty sources of protein, eat when you're hungry, stop when you're satisfied, is really similar to Dr. Finney's actual suggestion as well. The only, I think the only, Westman and Finney are similar and they work together a lot. I think the main difference is that Finney is very strict on keeping that protein level higher and so, and keeping the fats lower for fat loss. But he does not support the macro system like I give. I do the macros because I'm a binge eater and it helps for me to have strict macros to stick to. It helps me to keep my fats in check because I know that when I am eating fat to satiety, I'm never satiated. I just want to keep eating it. I'm a binge eater and that's the way it is. So I think it's great to eat when you're to eat till you're satisfied unless you're overeating and I overeat. And so that's why I use macros. Um... You can't find any of, you can't find the link anywhere. Oh man, I gotta be, I gotta figure it out. And I should add it to the main YouTube page too. Thanks Karen for the heads up. I will work on that. I will work on that. Cause I know you bought one of my t-shirts from my other store and I really appreciate it. You're so sweet. Uh, let's see. Did my hair fall out? Yes. But that's because of weight loss, not keto. Especially not the higher protein keto that I'm doing because higher protein is supposed to keep your hair intact. I did lose some through here, but as you can see, it's grown back and um, my hair is thinner than it was, but I actually like it better this way because my hair was way too thick before. Um, so yes, it did. But vitamin D3 seems to be the best thing that has helped me. Since I started taking vitamin D3 in the ritual vitamins, my hair, ha my hair falling out has been significantly improved. So that's why I still take them. That And they're just cute. And they taste like peppermint. They're the best. Okay, they're probably not the best, but I love them. And I take them anyway. Okay. Okay, so maybe it's because it's capital H and not a lowercase h. Okay, I will go check on that as soon as I am done here. Thank you for posting the Teespring, Jen. I appreciate it. Hey, Tara. Good to see you. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I lost it in month five, my hair. Five and six, I think. And then it kind of went in cycles, so it would stop for three months and it would fall again, but it never fell as worse as the first time. So, yeah. Sharon, you, you're going to think about trying what I'm doing? That's awesome. That's great. Well, you've lost 122 pounds. You should be very proud of where you're at. And honestly, like, Keto is killer awesome, no matter how you do it. I just find that the higher protein, lower fat keto works faster. And I just, I've retained a lot of lean muscle. You guys, I get a lot of comments about how are you wearing a size 10 and a size medium top at 187 pounds? How am I? Muscle. And have I worked out to get any of it? Not really. So that right there is testimony to me that the higher protein keto works really really well at what it says it does because I am leaner than I should be I look smaller than I should at 187 pounds even at five foot seven so I'm pretty happy with it <laughs> all right and I will be going to the doctor soon so you guys are going to know how my blood work is I've been nervous about that because I'm so worried that my triglycerides are going to be through the roof and it's going to be this huge thing and they're going to tell me to stop keto. I'm totally petrified that they're going to tell me to stop keto because I'm not going to do it no matter what. So uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I am sure it's going to be fine. Okay. So Wendy and Karen, thank you so much for being the two people who bought my hide and seek t-shirts. You guys are truly the, the OG truth seekers. Um, I don't use D3 and K2 drops, but the vitamin I take has D3 and K2 in it. Um, it's called Ritual, and it's like a monthly subscription, and I am not – they don't know who I am from Adam. I'm not in any way paid to tell people to take them. 
I just like them. They're probably not the best vitamin out there, but they're just cute and they taste like peppermint. That's seriously why I take them. They're smart. Kate, you finally got a bath. Woohoo, but I'm sorry you're still retaining fluid from the heat. The heat killed me all summer, so I feel ya. And I don't mind the heat as much, I don't, but the fluid retention is annoying. That's one thing about the winter that's so nice is that I don't have as much fluid retention. I've already lost, I was 190 again today, so I'm already going back down the other side of my fluid retention window. And I think it's more regular in the winter. And then in summer, it's just out of control. And I'm trying to figure out what I'm eating wrong, and I realize it's just the heat, and I'm hot. And that's what's the problem. So I'm sorry. Well, I still want to see a picture of you guys in the t-shirts. I want to see how it looks on. If it looks really silly, I got to know. I mean, does it look good? You probably wouldn't wear it in public. You probably just bought it to be nice to me. But I don't know. I haven't even bought myself one because I haven't been able to afford to. <laughs> I know that's bad. I know that's bad. That's bad. But it's Christmas and I'm I, uh, tomorrow, you guys, tomorrow is the big shopping day. Tomorrow, Dave gets his... Um, second to last check before Christmas, but it's the check that comes with his big bonus. So that's the only way we afford Christmas is that he trades in all of his unused sick leave and they give him like a certain amount of that. Like he, if you trade it in and don't actually use it, they make less, they spend less money giving you a portion of it for Christmas money. Does that make sense? So he gets quite a bit of money, enough for me to buy pretty much everything for Christmas, and then I do stockings with his check that comes on the 20th. We do the same thing every year. Tomorrow is the big day, and I haven't even finished my list of what I have to buy. That is how behind I am in life. Normally, I would have had this planned out and ready to go and like been chomping at the bit, and today I'm going, oh my gosh, I got to spend this whole day coming up with stuff to buy for my kids for Christmas, and I have no idea what they want other than the little kids because they are like, yeah. Ah, uh, have you heard about ancestral eating like the way that we ate hundreds of years ago, hundred, depending on where you came from, like some peeps actually do better eating high protein. I have not looked into that. That's the first I've heard of that. The more Neanderthal you have in you, the more carnivore you should be. Interesting. And if you're closer to the equator, you can handle more veggies. Huh. That's interesting. I will have to. I'll have to look into that. I don't, I'm, I don't know exactly. I know that all of my ancestors came from England and Scotland, came over to the Americas, and then I, of course, am descended from the Mormon pioneers who came across the plains. So I'd have to kind of like look into that a little bit and see if that has any validity. Because I do really well on the higher protein, and I'm much more happy and satiated on the higher protein. So Irish, I think I had some Irish, mostly Scottish and English, and that was more, Neanderthal was Irish. Hmm. So probably, maybe similar, if it came from the same area. That's so interesting. Yeah, I could probably go all the way full full carnivore, except for um, there's the stupid, the stupid restrictions. Like the carnivore restrictions are stupid. Some of them are dumb. I mean like, I'm freaking gonna eat my me a water enhancer and my yogurt. Sorry. I don't know. There was a lot of things that, that you couldn't eat that I was just like kind of rolling my eyes. So I think I could probably do, I'm pretty close to that. If you see what, you guys see what I eat. I eat mostly meat and cheese with a little bit of veg just for yum. I eat the veg for yum factor. That's pretty much it. And yeah, I would probably get depressed because of boredom. And I, and I do have depression Keto does help my depression, but I do sometimes have panic attacks. I have anxiety and I have depression. I sometimes get sad. But since I've been on keto, I've ne not been able to actually sink into the depths of despair like I used to on a weekly basis. So that is just huge improvements. Yesterday, I did have a freak out, which is what prompted me to videotape that section about stress because I was panicking, was freaking out. I felt the panic right up in me. I was crying. I'm like, Dave was like, hun, <laughs> have you had your salt? And I was like, no, I haven't. My brain won't work. I kept saying, why won't my brain do what I'm telling it to do? Why can't I think of where I'm trying to edit and I can't think of where the tool is that I'm looking for? I, my brain would not work. And as soon as I took the Soleil water, I was able to just go, oh, turned back on. 
And I could go back to editing and be calm. It was the weirdest thing. No, it's not weird. It's just the way it is. When you're, I only took two doses yesterday. And so I was already kind of behind on it. And then I hadn't taken any when I was trying to make the video. And because I've just been busy and I got distracted. And I, and so even me, who's the Soleil water queen, doesn't always remember to take it and gets herself into a bind because she didn't take the Soleil water. So, all right, guys. I got to go make my Christmas list and actually have to go help my 16 year old with math. He texted me right before I started this saying he was stuck and I need to help him. So the great, those are great kids down there still doing their school and allowing me to have time to do this stuff. They're just good, good, good kids. And prime rib is my favorite food. And that was the only thing I had on my birthday. I had to choose between going to the movie I wanted to see. Well, going to a movie at a decent hour or eating prime rib. And I had to choose the movie because I didn't want to be out so long. So thank you guys so much. This is the longest video ever, an hour and 35. I could talk to you guys forever. I, I love talking to you. It makes me cheered up. Totally makes my day. I hope I come up with something good for today's Vlogmas. And if not, it'll still be something. <laughs> it's a crappy thing about Vlogmas. I can't think of anything to talk about on Vlogmas. Sit me down here and I can talk about something forever. It's because you guys keep me going right? All right. I love you all so much. I'll talk to you again soon. Have a good day.